Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about infrared spectroscopy and how to get important information out of an infrared spectroscopy graph. This is a part of my organic chemistry series in spectroscopy. I'll have more videos coming out later on. Now, Infrared spectroscopy allows us to identify functional groups within a molecule. I'm going to list a couple of them here and then talk about them in greater detail as we go on. The ones that are the easiest and usually useful are, first of all, the hydroxyl or the amine groups, and these show a peak around 3500. Then, we have our carbon triple bond. So we have our alkynes and our nitriles. And these will show a peak around 2200. Then we have our carbon oxygen double bonds. So the carbonyls. And these will show a peak around 1700. Next, we have our carbon-carbon double bonds, or the arenes, for example, the benzene rings. And these will show a peak around 1600 to 1400. And lastly, we have our carbon-oxygen single bond, and these show a peak around 1800. Like I said earlier, write these down as it will help you remember the information and if you can just memorize these few functional groups that I don't think you're going to have to look at an IR table when you're right when you're doing a problem like this in an exam situation. So first, let's look at the hydroxyl functional groups. The hydroxyl functional groups will show a broad peak around 3500. So we have one propanol over here, and we see this broad peak. So there's a broad peak that goes all the way down. This is very characteristic of an OH functional group. And notice that a carboxylic acid also has an OH functional group. So we would expect that. So we would also expect a carboxylic acid to show a broad peak over here. Usually that peak is more intense. Now let's talk about the primary amine and the secondary amine functional groups. Now if we have a primary amine, for example one propyl amine over here, then we're going to see two medium-sized peaks around 3500. Now the two peaks over here correspond to the two NH2 bonds. I think that, will, that way you will be able to remember that when you have an amine, there's going to be two and two peaks. NH2, there's going to be two peaks. When it's a secondary amine, what we'll observe is only one peak. So since this comp, since this molecule over here only has one NH bond we're going to expect to see only one peak around 3500. Okay, let's move on to the carbon triple bond to carbon or carbon triple bonded to nitrogen functional groups. So the alkynes or the nitriles. So these show a small to medium sharp peak around 2200. Now here we have one butyne and we see that characteristic sharp peak around 2200. Sometimes this peak is a lot more smaller so it would be only going up to about this distance. However in this case we see that it goes all the way up to 50%. Now there is another important thing in this graph I think you should take notice of and that is this peak over here. Now, this peak is the result of the carbon-hydrogen bond over here, so terminal alkynes. This peak over here corresponds to that 
sp carbon hydrogen bond. Now you may wonder how do we know the difference between this this uh, sp carbon hydrogen bond and the NH NH bond. Well, that for that you look you look at the size of this peak. In this molecule, we see that the size of this size of this peak is a lot greater than what we saw before. This peak is a lot more smaller. This is how you would know that you have a terminal alkyne instead of an NH bond. And so both alkynes and nitriles have the peak over here. So carbonyl functional groups show a long or a big peak around 1700. Now carbonyl functional groups could be for example from carboxylic acids, esters, aldehydes and ketones, acyl chlorides, all of these will show a peak around 1700. Now usually if you have more than one carbonyl in your molecule and it is unsymmetrical then you may expect to see two long peaks over here. Now if it's symmetrical there is a there's a possibility that both of them will merge together and produce only one single peak. Okay? So carbonyl functional group 1700. So let's talk about the alkenes and the arenes. So this inspired spectroscopy graph is is from benzene and benzene benzenes and other alkenes and arenes will show this nice sharp skinny peak around four, from 1400 to 1600 it could be in either one of those places the conjugation changes the direction which shifted from 1400 to 1600 now usually this peak is medium to skinny and it is not as long and wide as the carbonyl peak that you see over here right next at 1700. Another thing that you may take note of in this graph is these peaks over here after 3000. So after 3000 we see a couple of these peaks over here and these indicate the sp2 carbon hydrogen bonds. Okay now sp3 hydrogen bonds always always stay before 3000. Next, we have our carbon oxygen single bonds, and these show multiple peaks around 12,000 to 1,000. And usually, this one is hard to tell, so I would recommend that you do not over interpret this one. But if you suspect that your molecule does have a carbon oxygen single bond, then expect to see peaks these long broad peaks over here. Like I said before, and a warning to you, do not over interpret this one. Peaks, peaks after 1400 become unreli bit unreliable. And so I, I like to use this region over here more from 4000 to 1400 and usually I don't interpret this area over here. Okay, now here's a practice problem. Try to interpret the functional groups from this infrared spectroscopy graph I have provided. I will write down the answers in the description box below. I hope this video was useful. If you would like to watch more future videos like these, please subscribe. Thank you.